Hello, my name is Dr. Georgina Larragui and I'm the coordinator of the MPhil in Public History and Cultural Heritage, um, which is based here at the School of Histories and Humanities in Trinity College in Dublin. Um, I'm also co-located with Glasnevin Trust, so I'm the Glasnevin Trust Assistant Professor of PH and CH as well. Um, and I am the coordinator of the of the master's program, as I mentioned. And what I'm going to do today is just talk you through the structure of the program a little bit and give you a flavour of what can be done and what has been done in the past. Um, so just a little bit about what public history and cultural heritage is. I mean, the program broadly involves the study of cultural memory and its construction, perception and loss, and also looking at the public status of history in the mo in modern society. So if we think about the um, controversy in the last number of years about the removal of history as a core subject from Irish second level teaching um, and the fact that it rattled on for quite a while and that it was reinstated demonstrates the extent to which the discipline of history is considered um, within the public sphere in Ireland. And that is a debate that will be replicated in different forms in different countries across the world. Um, in the course, you'll also examine political issues around public commemoration. So we think about the big 1916 commemorations that take place on O'Connell Street um, at Easter. Think also about commemoration of the American Civil War um, and various different sites of memory like Auschwitz or Colonial Williamsburg. Um, all of those kind of very um, Irish, but also international um, sites of memory. We'll also look at the role of museums and galleries and how the media shapes public perceptions of the past. We also look at how um, history is consumed and how ideas about the past are produced for different audiences and for consumption by different audiences. So if you think very differently about how historical fiction is written for a child versus for an adult, if you think about how gaming in an online world or in real space and real life is produced um, for children versus adults as well. That gives you a very simple example of the ways in which um, producers of history and ideas about the past consider their audience when they're when they're thinking about these big questions, I suppose. And we'll also think about more practical um, considerations like conservation and preservation, communication of physical heritage of past cultures, um, especially where interpretation or meaning might be contested. So I'm talking here a little bit about the structure of the course. So there are a number of different required elements which are non-negotiable effectively. And then there are optional modules. So you get to pick from a suite of options um, that's, that includes in the past, but has not been confined to these options. So there are these. this is just a flavor of what's available. But I'll go through the required elements first, and that's the core module. So that's the remembering, reminding and forgetting aspect of the course. And um, that happens usually in the autumn semester in Michaelmas. And there we talk about the field of public history and its emergence since the 1970s, primarily in the States, but increasingly across Europe um, and kind of the um, various different other jurisdictions. We think about also um, and the history of public history in Ireland. So if we think about it in the context of this course, this course is the oldest public history programme on the island of Ireland. It dates back to 2011 and was created by a colleague, Professor David Dixon. Um, and it's been operating now for 10 years. So there's a really good body of knowledge and a really good broad experience of what public history is and how it can be communicated in the academic setting. And in order to give you some practical um, knowledge and experience. We also have an internship with a number of different institutions, which I'll go into in further detail later. We also have practitioner workshops where professionals from the sector come in and speak to the class. You'll also have a field trip, which we go on and a major piece of research, a dissertation, which is between 12 and 15,000 words. And you produce that on a topic of your choosing in conjunction with what's available within the School of Histories and Humanities in terms of supervision. And that includes the classics department, so archaeology. It includes art history with Centre for Gender and Women's Studies and gender issues. It includes um, art history and also um, 
straight history. So and there we have um, expertise from the US um, to China, to modern Europe, medieval Europe um, and various different other jurisdictions and issues. So you can look to the staff profile page for the school to get a sense of the kinds of research supervision that you might have. But later on, I'll also talk about some of the topics that we have supervised um, as part of the dissertation section of the course. There are also three optional modules then. You do two before Christmas and one after Christmas. Um, so some of those options in the past have been Saving the Past, Contemporary Issues and Cultural Heritage, which is taught by Professor Christine Morris. Um, and there you learn about things like the introduction of um, LGBT TBQI plus um, issues in the National Museum in Ireland, for example, as well as thinking about the destruction of cultural heritage in war-torn Middle East. I teach institutions in the world history, memory and public representation, and that's about institutions of confinement. So typically we go from um, Alcatraz with prison museums globally um, to Kilmainham Jail in Dublin. We think about um, residential schools in Canada and Australia for Aboriginal populations. And we also think about the Magdalen laundries and mother and baby homes that were situated back home here in Ireland. Then we have History, Memory and Commemoration, which is taught by a number of colleagues across the Department of History and looks at different moments of commemoration and issues such as the 1798 Rebellion, such as the American Civil War and various different other jurisdictions and moments in history are covered there. And there you really get a sense um, and, and a very strong knowledge base of the theory around memory studies. Then Kieran O'Neill, who is... Um, former coordinator of the masters and sometime co-coordinator with myself teaching consuming history so it's about how history is produced and consumed in the broader media setting and then we have a colleague professor Catherine Lawless talking about gender art and identity so that's just a sample of what you might be able to do but there are other um topics that are covered as well such as GIS um and various different other modules that are available in our handbook as well so next, I want to talk a little bit about the field trip. The field trip is um, typically has gone. We've gone to Derry, London, Derry in Northern Ireland. Um, we went in 2018, 2019. And at different times, we've um, collaborated with other public history students on the island of Ireland um, from different institutions and universities. But this is a photograph of some of our students from 2018 um, who were in the Apprentice Boys Hall in Derry, London, Derry. Um, as a site of um, kind of contested history, Derry is a really interesting, um, a really interesting case study because of Bloody Sunday, for example, um, but also the Orange Order. And you have um, a very um, contested history in a very confined space, which has led to conflict in the past, but it's now moving towards a more peaceful situation. And then you have the emergence of the global phenomenon that is Derry Girls, for example, and the different ways in which that produces and reproduces ideas about the past. And as one of our uh, former students has said, it's one of the most, the best and most memorable things that she did as part of the program. So the practitioner workshops then are really interesting as well. After Christmas, we have professionals who work in the heritage sector across Ireland and the UK on occasion come in and speak to the class about their own experiences, their careers and what they see as the challenges within their specific sphere of operations and activities. So um, when we had a speaker come from the Medieval Mile Museum in Kilkenny City, for example, she discussed um, the ethics around the display of human remains, which is a new exhibit that they have down there. Then we had a colleague from Ancestry come in and discuss what is effectively one of the largest genealogical corporations operating across the globe at the moment. We also had somebody from Rare TV, which produces history programming, both for the British and Irish markets, but also for the US market. And then various different other institutions and advocacy groups, um, such as Justice for Magdalens and the Museum of British Colonialism, as well as the Museum of Ireland, the Library and Galleries of Ireland as well. So a wide variety of people come in and actually speak to the group and they get to ask us, you know, to get to ask questions and consider um, maybe a particular career path that they might have considered before within the sector. Then the dissertations then, which is a sizable chunk of your work, it's um, we definitely we try to leave the second semester 
freer of of face to face learning in terms of classroom time so that you can engage with your internship, which I'll, um, which I'll discuss in a minute, but also the dissertation. So we have a wide variety of topics that have been supervised in the last number of years um how history and how history uses social media vernacular history of moore street for example which is a very unique part of the um city center life in dublin over the past um decades which is transforming hugely under the impact of globalization and urban development and planning then we've looked at stuff like remembrance or reverence not we but the students who who we've supervised have looked at things like um, monumental landscape in new orleans plus kind of um, the role of philanthropy in shaping museum collections as well. In terms of geographic spread of the topic that you might want to look at, people t have looked at Irish case studies, very local case studies, English case studies. We've had people do their dissertation on topics relating to Iran, Argentina, Canada, all, uh, all parts of the US on topics like site-specific theatre, um, historical fiction, um, folklore. So there's a you know, basically what you're interested in, there's possibly a public history dimension too that you can engage with in order to develop a research proposal. And then we try to figure out if it's possible and if we can supervise it. And then we, we move on from there and hopefully you get a significant body of research um, in, a, in a confined um, dissertation form. And finally, then the internships, I suppose these are also a very valuable part of the course. Um, different sites and different institutions have been our cultural partners for the last number of years. Um, you can see there's a wide variety of places. So the Glasnevin Cemetery, St. Patrick's Cathedral, 14 Henrietta Street, which is Ireland's Tenement Museum. And students typically work on very specific and defined projects as part of their internship. And often there's an output like an online exhibition or a particular event or a collection that might be gathered together, um, an oral history collection, for example, in the case of Henrietta Street. So um, our, our students do participate in the production of history in these various different sites as well. Um, and it's a very valuable experience for them um, that they can then put on their CV as part of their professional development. So there's nothing else for me to say other than thank you. And if anybody has any questions, please feel free to email me at the address below and I can send on the handbook, the most recent handbook, etc. So thank you very much. Mm -hmm.